Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome to the Cisco Community Developer Connection discussion. We have a, our fun panelists here. Um, we're going to talk about community and social media and just what it, what it means to be uh, all connected. I'm Paul Zimmerman. I manage the uh, developer community engagement team. And my name is Sean Dahlberg. I'm the head of the developer community. I just recently joined, uh, so I'm just trying to learn as much as I can as quickly as I can. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. And then we have the rock stars all coming up in here in a second. Yes, we'll introduce them in just a moment. But first, in order to, uh, we want to talk about a little yeah. giveaway that we're going to be doing at the end of the session. Um, the, if you scan, panel. if you scan in this QR code, and we'll show at the end too, um, you'll answer a question. And the and from the people who answer the question correctly, uh, a name will be drawn, and we are giving a we Debnet bag. swag bag. A couple little things in here. So yeah, I even we ran across this. I did not know it was a thing. A bento Here's box. A bento box yeah. for Debnet. <laughs> Can I go and see there now? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave it there for just a second, and then we're going to get, well, again, I'll show it at the end uh, for, for those who join us late. All right. All right, here are our fabulous panelists. And <laughs> 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 <Hey>, Matt, of <laughs> course. <laughs> yes, I don't need to switch around. Um, see, you're uh, we have David Macias from Squaro Consulting, mm -hmm. who is our Cisco VIP, uh, as well as a great, our most recent guest on our Coders Corner uh, show that we did. It's our first Cisco or Coders Corner. Also. Right, right. So those of you in the community, if you're ever interested, let us know. We always need more guests. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'd love to have you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we have David uh, Penizola Seas. Oh, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> so, well, it, it's a common thing. He's also he's from, from Verizon, is principal engineer there. He is also a Cisco VIP community member. Hello. And then at the end there we have Matt Saunders, who is our community manager for Cisco U. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about community here today. All right. I guess with the introductions here, um, I guess uh, David, you have a microphone. We'll start with you. How's that? Oh God. <laughs> Can I pass uh, it up? You're, you're well known on social media and the Cisco Live events. Um, how has connecting with these events uh, impacted your work as an engineer at Verizon? Oh, it has been a huge thing, though, because when, when you connect with people... Is it close enough? Okay. When, when you connect with other people in these type of events, then it allows you to either skip some barriers that might be in the middle, or it allows you to also find some other acquaintances that could be well, just gravitating around the same people you know. So, uh, in, in general, I would say that you are uh, as strong or, or you would get as far as the people around you would allow you to because anyway, all of them are supporting you. In my case, I've been able to know or to meet a bunch of people who are experts. One person who is right now my closest friend, he initially was somebody who was in the community. He's still, he is still in the community. Huh? Friend. One of them. Oh, closer. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so, and uh, initially, then I asked him to be my mentor. I just met him through social media, and well, over the years, then he became the closest friend I have. He has been helping me also to, well, learn new things and and to develop. So, in general, when you get people around you that can help you grow, that can motivate you in some way, that can share the things they know, then that will undeniably help you to grow in many ways, not just as a professional, but also as a person. So there is quite a lot that you can get from all the others around you, and even the people whom, and this is funny though, but even the people that maybe you don't like that much have something <laughs> to teach you, even if it's, oh God, have some patience. But yes, <laughs> there is a bit to learn from everybody. Awesome, thanks David. For the other David, let's, let's get to you. Um, you've been extremely active in our communities. Contact center people, of course, know who you are because you're always helping people out there. Um, how has uh, being, being part of the community helped your consulting business? So I did not start with, uh, when I joined the community like almost 20 years ago, I did not start thinking like, one day I'm going to find a customer or, or, or my next job from here. But in, in hindsight, I was just naive. 
<laughs> because I have found a lot of customers. Um, I've worked with a lot of partners thanks to just the stuff that I posted out there, either because A, they saw something and they want to know more about or just buy the solution that I might have built for somebody else, or B, like, hey, we're doing something very similar, but there, like, there's all these things that are different. Um, are you available or somebody from your team available that can come in and uh, help us just you know, go it's, it's skip the first three steps and go to step five or whatever? Um, so it really has been helpful. But to me, the biggest motivation is just I have gotten a lot of knowledge from other people, like either in person, with, uh, like with working on bigger consulting companies. Um, and to me, knowledge is not like something you own, right? And the only way for it to continue to expand and grow is it's got to be out there for other people to consume it. So for me, it's just that I like sharing. I like hopefully making, helping somebody, tiny, tiny sliver, making their lives a little bit easier. And if I don't, I don't expect anything in return, the universe kind of takes care of itself. I, I, awesome. I, I truly believe. But at the end of the day, it's just about, for me, it's like, hey, this is what I know, and I'm happy to share. Awesome. It, 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 yeah, karma does exist, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So Matt, you've been managing the developer community over at the Cisco Learning. Um, and you've been a, uh, you've been working there for a while now. With the launch of the certifications and the growth of Cisco U, um, how have you seen your developer community uh, grow and mature? Yeah, um, so for us, it's been uh, really interesting. We started off, so my community traditionally serves the traditional network engineers, the CCNAs, the CCIEs, the, you know, the, the routing, switching, the network security folks, um, as they're going for their learning and their certifications. Um, and when we first started talking about network automation, uh, developer being have, you know developing developer skills, it was a lot about like, what are you talking about? Like, will this replace my job? That was the first question, right? Is this going to replace my job? Should I continue to do certifications? Over time, that progressed to, okay, well, so like, what should I know? What do I need to know? What should I learn? And now we're at the stage where it's more like. Okay, so I'm doing this in JSON, or I'm doing this in Python, and this is happening. Can somebody help me? Can somebody help me troubleshoot this? And so the, to see the maturity and the evolution of developer skills within the learning and certifications community has uh, been really nice. It's been a beautiful growth process for the community, and it's only going to continue, obviously. Um, folks like John Capio Bianco will not let us stand still, right? <laughs> no, he um, sure won't. Now it's developing with uh, uh, artificial intelligence, with AI, and, and, and John advocating for that. That's a word that's being talked to a few times lately. AI. Yes, exactly. I've heard it. I've heard it, yeah. You guys heard of that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's great to just, just continue to see the evolution. And like David mentioned, both Davids mentioned, first of all, forming friendships and relationships and connections, but also that, that sharing of knowledge and collaborating on on um, you know efforts, projects, troubleshooting, whatever it might be, and the connections that you end up building along the way um, is really beautiful. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, and I do want to touch a little on that. One of the things I always found interesting because I've been doing IT communities for about 15, 20 years, and we have a lot of one-person shops, and communities are great for that. But also, even in IT teams, I've seen you can become a little bit of an echo chamber. So as you're getting touch points outside in other communities, whether it's on social media or in forums. They're helping you in ways that you're not getting within your company. Uh, sometimes you have too many blinders on. We already know all of our, you know, the, the dirty spaghetti cabling and things <laughs> like that that others won't know, and they'll come in and, and give you different points of view. Uh, one of the questions I did want to ask, and I'm going to start with you, Matt, because it's a fun one. What does being authentic mean to you, and how do you do it? It's kind of, for me, it's, it's a simple question, and it's a simple answer. It's just be yourself, you know, like truly truly like be yourself um but that takes having safety right and, and building safety and trust in the community my son was doing a lot of college applications this year and scholarships and had to do a little talk at graduation and he talked about when he was a uh, underclassman coming into high school for the first time there were a couple upperclassmen that um, kind of embraced him and took him under their wing and made him feel safe and secure and allowed him to grow into himself over the course of high school and just relax and be himself. And that's really important within a community, right? Like if it's a, it's, if it's a culture of safety and trust, you can actually just relax and truly be your authentic self. 
I think David's a good example of just being your authentic <laughs> self, right? Like, there's no, there's no masking of, like, having to pretend to be anything with David. He just is who he is. Um, and that's a good example to others, I think. Yeah, and actually going with David, like, oh. one of the stories we talked about was you got caught not wearing the hat. Oh, yeah. We are talking for that. <laughs> it's funny that once... See, this is a character that has been in the making for several years uh, throughout <laughs> discussions in the community, uh, being Twitter or any other, mainly Twitter. So uh, this was born out of a discussion about one for all, all for one type of concept in the community. And one person who is key in the community is Denise Fisher, and then uh, she first... Oh, closer, sorry. She first came up then with uh, some stickers that had some musketeers, and then is eventually turning to, okay, now I'm going to give you this hat. And I won the cape also and with <laughs> the social media competitions we have here, and then the character just grew into something. And nowadays, then after, what, five years or so, then uh, I cannot go around without the hat because then people are just half recognizing you. Where's the hat? And they just look at you as in, do I have something on my face? No, actually, you're missing something. <laughs> so I was here on Friday and Saturday before the conference would start. And I was walking around the hotel and I was carrying the hat because otherwise I would see people who are arriving early to the conference and they would just look at me that way and I, okay, fine, let me just put the hat on. You know, like in, when Superman is wearing the glasses and then he is Clark Kent, and then, oh, I don't recognize you. Now I do. See, what well, I'm saying is the hat. And see, under the hat, there's nothing. But, <laughs> see, so, but it, it becomes an icon. And, and I'm, I'm actually proud of that because it has become a symbol. It has become something that the community can recognize. And it's something cute because it was burned out of positivity, uh, love interactions it wasn't something that just appeared out of nowhere and that's what gives it the value and yeah well it becomes sometimes awkward when i kind of take the hat off but well <laughs> i guess i can bear the burden <laughs> <laughs> so now your turn probably do, do you shower with it <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> So uh, the you know the question about uh, authenticity, I really think it's about to me it's about vulnerability. It's about like, hey, look, I'm not the smartest guy. I'll never claim to be. I will actually claim to be the, the, the total opposite most of the time or <laughs> all the time. Um, but just like if I need help, like I, I will reach out to people I know and I'll reach out to the community because those are my support channels, right? Uh, especially being a consultant that I did consulting as an independent contractor for many many years, like. I'm a one-man show. Like, if I don't know it, damn, my customer's super screwed. So I need to go figure it out, right? In the same way, then, that you go to others, that some other people will go to you. Yeah, so exactly. If you look at the heads of it, you will see that we're just little connecting dots. We yep. just build something here. Yeah, and, and I do get pinged directly a lot. I, I try to, like, hey, why don't you post this on the forum, and I'll help you there. Because yeah. there's only, like, again, right, only... So much that one person can do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, so, I was gonna say, exactly. Yeah. Out yeah. of every one person who asks it, there's probably ten more who haven't, and they reach the ad. Far too many times you come. Oh, sorry. Far too many times you you think, oh, I have this problem, and then the first thing that appears in Google is usually something at Cisco Learning Network <laughs> or in Cisco Community, and the answer is there. And I think I don't know seven or eight times out of ten there is somebody very prominent writing an essay about, oh, I know what happened, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, oh, God bless this guy. <laughs> then yeah, you can carry on. Sometimes you will be the, you know, the, the guinea pig. Okay, I will put here my problem so some other people can follow up on. And it also happens then when you think there's no answer for that, then somebody else comes and says, oh, I went through that. Let me just redirect it to the blog that I wrote about this. And you got it. So it's, uh, again, we are all the sum of all these people around us. Because anyway, whatever you share and you put it in a visible place, some other people will be able to reach it. And, well, the internet is your oyster. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Uh, so another question, and I'll preface this with one, is we'll see us talk about community different ways. I'll usually use, like, the big C, and that doesn't mean community.cisco.com. That means all the people, whether you're on social media, you're in the forums, we're in person. 
how do each of you keep up with the community? Because uh, I know even just today, just following Cisco Live hashtag, oh God, <laughs> there's a lot going on. A lot of tweeting, dude. A lot of it. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, well, it, it's a bit tricky because, well, right now at Cisco Live, my phone is almost glued to my hand all, all the time. I need to keep checking because it's not about replying to others. It's also other people then send stuff to you. Or you just follow the hashtag and you see that there is a, there is a plethora of content out there. Or somebody finds you or spots you that, I'm going to take a picture and then, okay, <laughs> fine, a picture and then they mention you oh god another one <laughs> but well it just simply takes time i i also have to admit that during cisco live events is it, it's quite intense yeah. so you know you get haven't you seen that meme in which there are some apps in the thumb well, more or less like that you really get a bit <laughs> sore but, but again it's it's a week during the year right after that then it, it also depends on how do you administer your time i i do invest a significant amount of time because I think it's valuable. And it helps other people. Some During the Cisco Live, you could see how important it is. Because yeah. even the social media crew in Cisco Live, they just help in so many ways. Sometimes you're lost and they, you just write a tweet and suddenly they say, oh, if you come down this room and follow these escalators, you will find the room you're looking for. Or I lost something and... And I want to know if somebody saw it. And suddenly, somebody found your backpack. Here it is. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's about the possibilities that are out there. And you just need to raise your voice a bit. Yeah. Awesome. I think for me, uh, you really can't keep up. There's too much, right? There's too much. Uh, so I use like the, 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 the Cisco forums. I subscribe to maybe two communities, contact center, the developer contact center. And I just kind of get, get an email every time there's a new post. And I'll take a quick peek. If I think it's something I can contribute, I will uh, save it for like later processing. And I actually do it as a mind shift to like, okay, you know, I've been working on this, I've been developing this application in CVV for two hours now. I'm gonna take a mental break and maybe look at a UCCX problem. Um, just help me like, just kind of reset my mind for a little bit and go back. Some people aren't that way. I see <laughs> the other thing, like, look, if, if you run into the community and you see something and an upload alone is helpful, right? Yeah. Because the, if you see a response and one of them has three uploads and the other ones have zero, and you only have 30 seconds, read the one with three uploads. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's right. So, so that alone, tiny little took three seconds for you to do, but you are contributing just just with a tiny bit of time. So I think it's really hard. I think trying to say to keep up is depends on what you mean by it, but I can't keep up. And I don't think any yeah. one person can. Especially, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we have jobs. Well, and I, I like money and I like to eat. So. Yeah, I was going to say, Paul and I are the same, Matt, to an extent. Also, like, our job is community, and I can't keep up with it all. Yeah. So. yeah, I think for me, it really does come back to being authentic with yourself as much as anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what can I give, right? And what can I not? And you have to know, like, where you can give and where you just can't, and just be okay with that and just, you know, accept that and just be authentic with yourself about what you can and can't do and just do your best that you can and pick your pick your battles pick your areas to focus on nice let's see where are we so what is your favorite part or no there was another one I wonder what is a secret about the Cisco community you wish more people knew about we'll start with you Matt since so for me it's it's um <clears throat> it's folks like David so uh, when I first met David, he was uh, a networking academy instructor. Yep. Did, were you already CCNA, remind me? Yes, right? CCNA, yeah. CCNA. And he, he was just kind of stumbling around uh, the CC. <laughs> I still do. I just, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> he was just kind of stumbling around the Cisco Learning Network and kind of um, asking some questions and helping others answer questions. I don't think that he realized, like, the value that he was going to get out of being connected to the community and the, the, just the growth that he would experience both personally and professionally. And that's what I want people to understand is we know a lot of folks come to community first because they have a, a challenge they're trying to solve, right? And they stay because they end up getting connected to wonderful, amazing people that are actually incredibly supportive and helpful and friendly and they make friends and everything. And um, that's, that's, that's the epitome of it for me is that I want folks to understand there's more here than just pop in and out. Make the sound effect. 
<laughs> pop in and out and get an answer to your question, there's actually tremendous opportunities to grow uh, both professionally and personally through it as well. Nice. What about you, David? There's a ridiculous amount of very, very smart people. Elliot, Bill King, Jonathan, like on the contact center side, like it blows my mind some of the knowledge that they're dropping. Like, they're, you know, just, just, just by, but just by reading their, their anything that they post is generally something that you're gonna learn something from it. So I just feel that there's you're gonna realize you're gonna find key people that no matter any time that they post, there's something valuable there. And I'm talking in the technical sense mainly, uh, but also getting to know them personally. Like they are also ridiculously quality good people. On top of that, look at those legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute that Monday. <laughs> so just to, to follow up on what Matt said. Uh, for the big secret is exactly this. The, you would get from it as much as you put into it. And in my case, it helped me immensely because when we met, or well, not in person, but when we knew about each other, I was in a completely different country. I was in a completely different employment situation. And thanks to all the support, knowledge, that, and people I could meet in the community, I managed then to grow enough so I could find a job somewhere else, move to another country, learn other new things that for me it has been, at least in my case, it has been life changing. Otherwise, I would be somewhere else struggling to even eat three times a day. It's a, it, it was a massive change. And I have so much to thank to the community and the people around it because without them, I wouldn't be here. And it turns out that the more effort I put, then I guess the luckier I get. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Awesome. And that's actually one of the things I like about community we just brought up. Like, I didn't actually know about Kilton Monday until today. Uh, and it's one of those in secrets. The more people you start meeting in the community, the more you start learning about all these different things. All right. What do we got next? Um, I guess as we uh, are looking at the community, where, where do you see it going? Uh, I mean, we... We, we always want to grow the communities. We always want to, you know, meet more people and, and see that. How do, you, how do you see the future of community as uh, where, where it's going and what, what you might feel that you get out of it? Um, for me, I just hope to see the, the reciprocal nature of it continue, right? Not necessarily for me the constant growth and more people joining, et cetera, et cetera, but the reciprocal nature of it, right? Like I mentioned with my son, as the underclassmen and underclass, you know, women come into the community um, to continue the guidance and the leadership and the mentorship, and just to kind of continue to, you know, recycle and recycle that kind of continuously and perpetually in the evergreen sense, and just keep that going. Nice. I have to agree with this because it, the size of the community doesn't necessarily mean that it would have a high quality. Because there could be a lot of people who logged in once and then they never logged in again. Oh, yeah. But there will be some key people who then maintain this constant contact. Yeah. And, well, I would see it as a as it, it will be echo. And, uh, and you will be just, well, getting the reciprocal effect of that echo. Once again, not as an echo chamber, but just that you will get this ping back. Or, well, if you're a, if, if you're a geek, then, okay, you will have a broadcast tour. But what is important <laughs> here is that the more that the people would contribute, then it will become this marvelous, positive spiral. Yeah. It doesn't need to necessarily grow in size, but it will grow in, in quality, in content, in nature. It, it will simply morph into something, I think, cuter. I think, I think it really just comes down to the people, and the more people that join and participate, the better, like, it will not just immediately grow and be better, right? But the, the, we have a higher likelihood of having a better community with more people participating, right? Uh, so to me, it's just about continuing to do it the way it is. It's really become a lot more centralized. Back like 15, 20 years ago, it was all over the place. Yeah. There were multiple communities, and it it's definitely has improved. It's definitely it's gotten better and better, and hopefully it continues in that trajectory. So I just think it's in a great spot. It's just, hey, have some time, participate. Yeah. Nice. And actually, I sort of want to echo on something Matt said. Like, this is the one thing I want to make sure we always keep in the Cisco community because one of the things I really like is the helpful nature of it. When you were telling your story about an undergrad and the upperclassmen, I was like, 
is this going this direction or this direction? Because we've all been to schools where sometimes the upperclassmen treat people a little differently when you're a lower classman. And that's one of the great things about this community is people are in here helping each other. They're not like throwing knowledge on you and calling you a newbie and an idiot. They're usually just like, oh, here's a different way of looking at it, a different perspective and helping us all grow. Yeah, because I'll kick the people out that uh, <laughs> that are, you know, elitist about it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I imagine is fun, though, because sometimes people don't realize that. Like, we've all been on Twitter and the Internet. Like, sometimes people are like, hey, I'm just talking to you. And you're like, no, you're all caps. You're being really rude. And you don't realize <laughs> that. And I assume there's a, a bit of a soft skill there in helping people understand what they're doing. Yeah, no, that, that's tough. You, you have to rely on some peer, um, some positive peer pressure. Right, to help folks understand, like, this isn't the norm in this community, yeah. right? It's not a toxic community. It's, it's, we're here for helping each other in a safe and trusting environment. Absolutely. And uh, in my opinion, this is where the community managers come in, like him or Carlo or Rigo or Tanner. Yeah. They, because it's not about just the people in the community, because there should be some level of vigilance, if you want to call it that word. Moderation is the right word. Yeah. And they are... Well, it, it, they're one of their functions, or is it one of the contributions to the community, is also to uh, foster this positive culture. Yeah. Because if you have a bunch of people who are toxic, we all know that in some other forums, oh God, there's so much of it. Yeah. But you see that then, the moment that you try to foster this positive community and you receive a positive feedback, it just becomes, it becomes a norm. Probably an unwritten one, but it's a norm. Yeah. And uh, this is what I have seen, at least in the Cisco community in general, being Cisco community or Cisco Learning Network. Do you see that the the same moderators who are well keeping a vigilant eye on things will happen well, occurring correctly, or at least within their own boundaries? They are also uh, joining the conversation. They are also pulling other people in. Sometimes, because I, I do contribute with things about Cisco SD1, for instance. Sometimes I don't see things, and then Matt just sends me a message over WebEx, or he sends me uh, something over email, or in any other way. He says, hey, just look at this. And then I jump in, and, oh, hello. And then I <laughs> hey, just try to help in some way. Yeah. So it's it's about then simply that pulling the strings a little, but not, not in a malicious way, because this is overly yeah. positive. You're just trying to keep the people together, the ones that you know are going to flourish into something bigger. Huh? That's correct. Setting an example. You know, points for Gryffindor and the man with the legs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nice legs. Because everybody has legs. My bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I guess as uh, you guys have been all doing community stuff for a long time now, um, let's go back a little bit. What got you first interested in, in joining a community and, and contributing to it? Uh, for me, it's a little bit of a long rambling backstory that I won't take up too much of everybody's time with. But um, basically, uh, I, I, I figured it out along the way, basically, that this is where I wanted to be. And um, I made some career changes to make it happen and made some pivots and really focused my, myself professionally uh, full time to it. So, yeah, it's the sense of connectivity um, to a, a great community of folks that um, I, I connect with and I can resonate with. And, um, you know, really seeing a lot of life-changing experiences, like David mentioned, for his own life, um, come out of the communities um, and just kind of come out of this larger community overall in general. Um, so that's what kind of kept, got me focused and, and headed in this direction. Nice. To me, I had, I had problems I needed solved. So that's, I mean, that's, ex <laughs> that's the only reason. Like, I, they, were, they were a means to an end, and I stuck around for almost 20 years. So, uh, yeah. And I did get most of my answers, uh, most of my problems solved. <laughs> awesome. Yep. It's, but for me, it's the same. Uh, in my case, then, I get... Oh, closer? Oh, God. This is a bit <laughs> awkward. I got to uh, know the, or meet the community while I was a student at the Cisco Academy because I have been, since the beginning, all the time, in a way related to Cisco. I started as a Cisco Academy student, then I became a Cisco Academy instructor once I graduated. And... Uh, then I became a Cisco VIP because of the contribution, and and I kept well helping in some way. But the initial uh, reason, because I got into the community, was that I had well, yeah, <laughs> problem to solve. I was learning 
So the first thing I was told when I was in the academy is you have questions, get the Cisco Learning Network. And you immediately, sorry, I should have done the thing. <laughs> <laughs> immediately I found that there was something valuable there that I have to keep an eye on. And then over time it just grows bigger and bigger. But you only need to have the, a little curiosity and well, probably also the need <laughs> to solve a problem. And then, oh God, there is more than meets the eye. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you guys, uh, I mean, the communities are fairly focused on um, questions about, you know, technologies or learning or things like that. Social media is a little bit more of a free-for-all, um, but it's still, you know, a way that we connect with people. I guess, um, let's talk a little bit about that. How, uh, how has social media uh, influenced your, your interactions with, with, with people? I try to avoid it okay. somewhat. I, I have a little, like, so I, I, I've kept, uh, um, so instead of a diary, I started a blog when I was in college, and now the blog can drink. It's old enough to drink. <laughs> um, so, I, I, so I've enjoyed sort of, like, capturing, and, and it used to start as really as kind of a diary, and now it's mainly just technical items. And um, I, I mainly blog because I know I'm going to forget it the, the moment my project ends. So... Um, uh, so I, that's really where I, uh, the only place where I think social media applies to me. Twitter, I do a little bit. I mainly just consume, but I, I feel that uh, for, at least for me, I try to stay away from social media as much. The the communities are more moderated, more controlled. There's a very specific topic, and I feel like I'm, I'm uh, not. I'm, it's the best use of my time. A better use of my time. So, well, for me, social media. Yeah, it's uh, hit, hit, hit and go there. Hit and miss on that one, yeah. Well, I have to agree with some things he said because the truth is that in social media, the moderation is not the same. So you can get the same degree of positiveness on the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. And it, it becomes a balancing act. You also have to learn what to simply let go and, and just ignore and what, uh, and what you can magnify and contribute with. In Twitter, in general, sometimes we have discussions about nonsense and completely unrelated things to networking. And sometimes we have discussions that uh, include many uh, members of the community who don't necessarily write on Cisco Learning Network. Some people maybe blog more, some others just get into Cisco community. Some others only blog, some others do blogs. So there, there's all sorts of content. And at least what I have found is that in Twitter, you find a bunch of all these people just well, converging in some way. Although, it has to be done with well, search and moderation, because otherwise you will eat out all the time. Uh, you will find quite the, well, the, you will find quite a lot of gold in, in Twitter if you know where to look for and which yeah. people to follow, because you can also become a bit selective. So know that everything is a tragedy, tragedy but it becomes then a, a balancing act. You would have to do the moderation yourself of what you're consuming and what you're interacting with. Um, for me, it's uh, so with the Cisco Learning Network and the Cisco U community, um, you know, we're very focused, right? We're very, it's very much learning and certifications, technical topics, technical topics. And for me, the social media is an um, opportunity to kind of expand beyond that a little bit more. Um, I'll see when folks are traveling, having a good, you know, a holiday here and there, having some fun. It's my opportunity to spam about baseball-related uh, <laughs> content. Go um, Giants! Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, and also like quick hits, right? It's a little more fun, social, true social interaction yeah. mixed with the serious technical content. Um, some of the trending topics that, for, so for me, we're you know, learning and certifications. Uh, community topics are again very focused, right, on exam topics or things that are very particular to certification exams. But we're not always maybe out in front with things like Chat GPT or Network G GPT, which John will be talking about. So it's also an opportunity to kind of stay ahead of or outside of some of the scope of the content structure that we have on our community, and just kind of connect with folks a little bit more on a personal level as well. Thanks. Nice. You want to see if there's questions or? Sure. Uh, anyone in the audience have any questions you want to ask the panel? No? OK. I can ask you, what's your squat routine? <laughs> 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 
Anyone here active in the communities, either Cisco community or CLN community? Elliot? <coughs> Social media, folks connected on social media at all? Join us. We have cookies and a couch. I don't know. No, I think this comes. No, no, no. This comes back to being authentic, dude. If I don't know the answer, it's just to no. Oh, but I might know somebody who knows. Yeah. So then, no, that's, that's, the, what, that's, the thing. that's what he does. Then sometimes, as I said, then, oh, let me just send this to David because he might know. If I don't know, then I will just send it to somebody else. <laughs> but I have no intention of building a different narrative because at some point it falls. Yeah, to Peter, for instance. <laughs> Peter Paluk is a prominent member of the community who writes in a beautiful way. And then he writes this, I'll be brief. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a dissertation, but it's it, it's so well written. But it's always he's always spot on. And if I don't know, probably I would ask him because actually he's he's my closest friend. And it, it comes in, in in this way. We're not trying to uh, uh, no again with the closest friend thing. No offense, no offense. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not that he's not close. He, we are, but <laughs> but it, it again if you are into building this image that probably would just lead some other people towards in a completely different direction, but go ahead and I wish you luck trying to maintain it because eventually it's going to fall. I would rather be just who I am and that way I can't be worried about whatever I told you some time ago because, see, it, if you're going to lie, you need to have a really good memory. Sometimes I don't remember what I ate yesterday. So that's not my thing. and I have zero <laughs> intentions in that. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great answer. And for me, I, 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 uh, I have a, I'm fortunate enough that I, I work for Cisco, so I know plenty of internal folks as well. So, yeah, I don't have to know everything. I just need to know who to go ask. Um, we describe, my team and I, we describe our job as helping to connect people to people and people to information. Those two things is our main conduit, conduits in that regard. So for me, absolutely. If I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, can, I can usually kind of like find out. And, and Cisco used a while ago several Cisco lives ago, a, a, they used this uh, slogan of the uh, uh, network of people, or people networking. And this is exactly what we're doing. You don't have to know everything, but you know a little bit about something. The other person knows a little bit about something. And eventually then with all the things well add up, then you have well, <laughs> something beautiful you can make use of. Well, and that's, I mean, that's one of the fun things of technology. There's no one who's going to know everything. And even if you knew it today, it's all changing tomorrow anyways. Um, so if you're focused in the right areas or a jack of all trades, having a community of people you can rely on, like, hey, maybe I know a lot about you know, network automation. I know nothing about DevSecOps. I go out to the right people and learn a little bit more. Absolutely. Really, if you guys aren't currently connected in, in either uh, any sense to the, the larger community around networking in general, IT, Cisco specifically, um, really, really do strongly encourage you to consider kind of getting connected to the best of your ability. You can, you can like, us, like we mentioned, you can limit what you're you know, going to be able to do and going to be able to commit to, but um, there's just a lot of really positive uh, growth and, and, and really just growth that can come out of it, in my opinion. Come. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great point. And you know, the community with the capital C, the big, the bigger, larger community. Of course, this events like this are a huge part of that as well. Um, you know, Cisco Live. We're all here, obviously. Um, what other other kinds of uh, events do you guys attend or or try to uh, connect with people on? Depends on what your focus is. Like Enterprise Connect for all generic technologies is a great conference. Probably my, my favorite conference. Cisco Live being second favorite conference. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> is that allowed? Is that uh, uh, and, and honestly, also user groups are like the other things. I, I joined like an AWS user group. And there's a, uh, when I lived in Texas, a Cisco users group. Like there are communities out there. You just got to like go find them. And if you have the time and inclination, there aren't one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be slow, and it's going to be lonely sometimes, but <laughs> just show up every day, and uh, somebody will join you eventually. Yeah. Right on. Well, in my case, I'm all given into Cisco Live, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mostly Cisco Live, and anything that happens, well, virtually. So sometimes, well, 
very often, honestly. There are uh, webinars by Cisco and there are webinars by Cisco community. In general, I do a lot of these webinars or, or virtual. I simply establish a virtual presence, mostly because uh, some communities are stronger and richer in the US, mm -hmm. but when you move towards Europe, then there will be some smaller groups. In many cases, talking a completely different language, and yeah. I'm still struggling to learn one of them. <laughs> I live in Czech Republic. I'm still I'm still struggling with one. So, <laughs> oh god, no. well, this is my third language. But anyway, <laughs> Czech, well, Czech on its own is a challenging language, and uh, you have some user groups, which I agree with, but. Some of them are just in this particular language. It, at least for me, it becomes challenging. I know that for the people who are local, there are several meetings. Uh, there is an user group that meets in Prague where I live. But as I struggle all this to join them in person, I try to do my best to then contribute on a virtual way in some other, well, in some other communities in which I know I can interact with. For instance, I do help uh, in English and also in Spanish, which are the two languages I can speak decently. In Czech, I can bark, but that works. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it is, you just have to find what suits you. Because for me, it's virtual because the conditions are given for that. For him, could be in person and also virtual. For him, could be both. So it all depends on, well, what's the time you have available for this as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, virtual is always a fun. Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, it's okay. I was just going to say, I decided to finally get active in Reddit this year. Um, and the, the certification forums and Reddit oh. is because I realized like there's a lot of people over here that need a lot of help um, and there's a lot of misinformation on that platform and I was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even in just like you know benign topics like learning certifications and I just like let me try to help out a little bit here so um, yeah there's always opportunities <laughs> no, I'm very, very focused on, in that, in that, in that, uh, on that platform and what I, what I choose to focus on. Um, but yeah, I just there's a lot of opportunities to expand, uh, you know, just everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I guess uh, we're going we're gonna to have some special guests come up in just a few minutes. Uh, but as a segue into that, this because uh, we have, um, you know, a lot of talk about AI and ChatGPT. And you know, there's always there's chat bots around that people use to get sometimes to get answers to questions. <laughs> they don't. I I find them very annoying a lot of the time, but they're getting better. Um, I guess, but I do have a concern that you know stuff like that in, again, coming into the community could it could impact you know the way that people interact with each other, rather than having a machine giving the answers rather than people connecting. Um, what do you guys see? Uh, how, what kind of impacts do you guys see with with AI and, and community? Well, I don't think it'll ever replace the the human interaction, the human connections, right? Like we want to connect with each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's why we're here this week. Like, it's not going to replace it ever. You know, it will definitely supplement a lot and augment a lot, and hopefully streamline yeah. access to information and knowledge. One of our most common question topics on the community for the Cisco U community today is around recertification. How do I do this? What do I do? How do I do this? What do I do? You don't necessarily. We don't necessarily, as humans, need to continue to answer that same question again and again every day. Yeah. Um, so something with a, some well-trained uh, chat uh, bots and AI-driven chat bots can really help to simplify and tear down walls and borders to access of information and the, to knowledge. And I think that's extremely valuable. And I don't think it'll ever truly replace human-to-human -human interaction. We want to connect with each other ultimately at the end of the day. I like that. It, it's a tool. And it needs to be thought of as a tool, not as a human replacement. Um, I, I, I actually am looking forward to the time where you ask it a very specific technical question, and it gives you a very good, correct <laughs> answer. Right, because it would make my life easier, yeah. but it's never going to be a hundred percent. But at the end of the day, right, it's still a tool. It's you know what's uh, video kill the radio star. You know, <laughs> like so these, these are all tools. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, they already said what I wanted to say, so I can only add that I don't think any machine can replace then hogs and chocolate. And well, <laughs> I'm all in for that. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, with that. I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of special guests we have here. Annie Hardy, who's our Cisco Senior Visioneer, and Amy Chapman, who's our Cisco Live uh, Digital Platform oh. Manager. Um, Should I move? Cool. Uh, we will need two chairs. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So it's going to take about, I'd say, two minutes for setup, getting everything ready. 
Um, do you want to grab a bite or something while they're setting up? And maybe we could talk a little bit about what, what's going on here. Um, they'll be, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be performing here on Wednesday. And um, what we're going to do is get some ideas uh, about what kinds of, uh, what, what, actually, uh, Andy can probably explain this better than, than me, I can. <laughs> Hello. Hey, and just real quick, while they're setting everything up, uh, one of the things I just heard, if you filled out the survey anonymously, we don't have a way of awarding someone a prize. So if you, anyone is interested in winning a Debbie and a backpack and everything else, make sure to put your, your info in there. So that means you have to log, I think it logs in, um, it, it logs into the, dev, the developers at Cisco.com? Oh yes, well we'll go there right now while while they're setting up. Um, again, here's the Slido QR. Here's the QR code uh, to enter for our raffle for the DevNet swag bag. Um, so please, please do. And uh, when we're done with the session here, we will uh, we will be giving that away. What are you looking for, Annie? <laughs> oh no, thank you. That was great. There is. <laughs> It was, when I saw that, I was like, that's totally going in there. No, that was great. Are you taking off? Yes. See, David, thank you. Oh, button even, that's cool. There you go. All right, we'll, uh, we'll go back to the, the other slide um, so that we can uh, talk a little bit about what's going on here. Looks like you guys are just about set up, so that's awesome. I promise you it's worth the wait. I promise <laughs> that it's worth the wait. Hi, my name is Annie Hardy. I am Cisco's senior visioneer, and I have an awesome leg guitar. Uh, my job is looking ahead. I look at the future of human-machine interaction. Um, I also just get to do really interesting, fun stuff. And so we've come here today because um, we wanted to explore the future with you and bring it to the present. So what we've done is we've written some songs with AI, um, taking prompts from folks just like you. And then after we perform some of them, it's very loud. OK, thank you. After we perform some of them. maybe you're going to have the opportunity to give us prompts that we can then use, and we're going to write songs and perform them on Wednesday. So we're going to give you an example. We talked about AI a little bit earlier. We're going to give you an example of some of what um, AI can do, and then you get to be a part of what comes next. <laughs> so what we've done is we've... I'm going to... So the good, there's good news and bad news. The, the bad news is that I can't find my stuff that I printed. The good news is I'm going to be OK. Hold on. <laughs> but Amy's job has changed. Amy, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Amy Chapman, and I am the digital platform manager for Cisco Live. So I'm in charge of the website and the Reg platform and social stuff. That's cute. You just said Reg platform. The Reg platform. Um, all right. So the first one we're going to sing, uh, it was, it's called Network Heroes. So what I did was I gave them very specific prompts um, of songs that I wanted it to write. And it gave us lyrics. And so we put some stuff around it, some music around it. Can you hear that? And sometimes we said the kind of the style. So this was in the style of Paul Simon. It's called Network Heroes. Ready? OK. There's a bad actor from another land trying to pack our systems and take command. But our engineers, they're on the case, working day and night to keep us safe. <laughs> This bad actor, he thought he had a speed, but our engineers are elite, 
an elite. They fought off the attack with all their might and saved our network from a dreadful plight. Their network heroes shielding us, they keep us safe and sound. We're so grateful for A cheer for our engineers for keeping us safe from harm and fear. We'll keep fighting, we won't give in. We'll protect our network and we win. Their network heroes shielding us, they keep us safe and sound. We're so grateful for their service, protecting us all from the Do you guys know it yet? Their network heroes shielding us. They keep us safe and sound. We're so grateful for their service, protecting us all from the underground. All right, that was one. Okay, yay. Yeah, right? Right? Now, the next one. Just, just jump straight into the next one. You can put on your... Here. Actually, I do need a helmet. So the next one is a little special. <laughs> do we want to plug it in? We should. The next one is actually a wrap um, called Hybrid Work Dev about other... It's in the top. About a day in the life of a software developer... Uh, when hybrid work is what it does. Hold on. All right. Okay. So you might you might actually identify with this one as well. The other one you might have, but this one maybe as well. Yo, 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 it's the DevNet 2. Rapping about a software dev might be you. I'll take you on a journey of a hybrid work day. So sit back and relax and hear what I gotta say. First things first, they wake up in the morning. Free t shirt and no time for yawning. Gotta hit the ground running, cause there's code to write, deadlines to meet. There's no time to fight. They head to the office with their headphones on, jamming to some beats. They're in the zone. Their desk may be cluttered with paper and snacks, but they don't mind the mess. They're on the attack. They open up their laptop and start to code, typing away with a focus as bold. They work through the morning without a break until their stomach grumbles and they need to take a lunch break, perhaps with some colleagues in tow. They talk about their projects and what they know. They share some hot laughs and maybe some memes. Then it's back to work and back to screens. The afternoon flies by with more code to write. They're in the flow and everything's all right. They're on a roll until a bug appears. They scratch their head and wipe away the tears, but they don't give up. They're determined to find the source of the bug and fix it in no time. They work late into the night with the eyes strained, and when they finally fix it, they feel unchained. They go home exhausted, but with a sense of pride because success feels good on the inside. They hit the bed with dreams of winning and syntax. Instead of stress, they finally relax. So there you have it. 
The hybrid work day of a software dev in their daily sleigh. They work hard, they play hard, and they never stop. Yeah, they're the best, and that's why we give them mad props, yo. That's it. As a reminder, this is AI generated with a little massaging. That is not, that's just free beats online. This is mm, my personal account that I have used. Okay. I've used my personal account. So what we're gonna do. So there are multiple AIs that you can use for songwriting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take prompts right now. And then over the next two days, we're going to work those prompts into uh, AI generated songs and we're going to perform them on Wednesday. So my question for y'all, yeah. My question for y'all is, what do you want an AI to write a song about? <laughs> that, those two, those two are good. We have Maybe one. Maybe we'll bring them back. We have on one that's, that we're gonna do on Wednesday. It's called "Ode to My Sweatpants." Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, is there something that's really bothering you? Is there something that you're working on? Are you excited about in networking? I don't want it to all be like, Cisco is amazing. <laughs> the end of the traditional data center. Oh, that's a good So good. <laughs> so good. What style? Of the well, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, what style? The Doors. The you? Doors is good, actually. The yeah. Doors. This the is the doors? End. I, think I, I think I might be able to take that one. <laughs> you could do that one. I love this it. This is the end. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what else? That's good. That's a good start. Welcome to the cloud. Welcome to the cloud. Guns and roses. What did you say? Oh, greatest showman. Welcome to the cloud. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, that's going to be good. Greatest showman style. What? <laughs> Integration. And deployment, yeah. And deployment. What style? What style? The style of jazz? Jacks. Oh. <laughs> they won't let me strum loudly. Brittany? <laughs> Brittany? <laughs> Britney Spears? Oh, sure. I'll write that right down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other ones? That's pretty good. We got three. Any, one more? We got room for another? Anyone? Anyone? That was pretty good. Yes, what about Zisco Moraghi? I mean, there's so many things to love. Uh, Software-defined networking? Mm-hmm. How do we feel about software-defined networking in Meraki? Like, do we like it? Are we happy about it? Does it drive us crazy? We love it. We love it. So this is a love song about software-defined networking. All right, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh yeah. Any okay. any particular style of love song? Oh, Eric there you go. Oh. There you go. Yeah. I will have to get some beats on that. That will be good. <laughs> all right. Well, this is great. Good foundation for Wednesday. Come back yeah. and let's see how we did. Yeah, looking Thank forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, before we go, we have a one last chance to get the dev the. DevNet swag bag, and uh, if you have it, uh, you got you got a winner. All right. Uh, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Gageby. Nathan. All right. Woo! All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. There's still some food if you're hungry. Let us know how the bento box works out. My daughter loves them, so I will. She's actually that's her thing. Oh really? Awesome. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well.
Nice, you just keep winning. Now it's even. <laughs> Yeah, that was...